Well, hello, writers. Welcome to episode number one of The Black Heron. Yes, you are in the right place. This is a special bonus episode. This is the very first episode where Sasha Black and I are talking about our writing trajectories. We are going to do this once a month-ish, and we are going to release it to you if you would like early access, a whole month early access to our conversation. In fact, after you listen to this one, you can go grab episode number two over at patreon.com slash Rachel over or over at Sasha's Patreon. And um, I'm just going to jump right into this. Please enjoy this irreverent, probably curse, curse laced chat with my friend, Sasha. Here we go. So tell me, how are you? I am so good. I have been so looking forward to chatting with you, my friend. And I have to tell you, so I we're recording and, you know, who knows what of this will make it to air or all of it. Who, who knows? But, you know, I just, I just adore you. I just adore you. And I love listening to your podcast. And I feel like you're a friend. And I was, you know, walking and, you know, we've been in each other's lives for like, Years. Like you listened yes. to my show with Jay and I loved your, your show with Daniel and your own show. And I was just walking around the hills and um, I remember uh, here in New Zealand and I'm on the polar opposite world from you. Like literally, literally. if I drove through the earth, <laughs> I would come up in Northern Spain. Like that's yeah. how opposite we are. Um, and I was, and I was thinking about the conversation we had uh, when you were on my show and you said something like, you know, oh, I wish I had more writing friends close by. And then that just like got me thinking, but our writing friends can be close by wherever we are. And it is really nice to have them in town too. And that's, you know, mm -hmm. to be, to be gotten to word. But I was like, what if, what if we chatted every once in a while and, and put it up for people to listen to? Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I'm totally up for it. When you said that, I was like, oh my, she, no, no, she can't be me. Stop I was it. like, oh my God, but I love Rachel. She can't possibly mean me. <laughs> so I was like, oh my God. So like, yeah, I was, I was like all the way in, like immediately had already jumped like feet first. And I, and I was like, but Ellie told me I wasn't allowed to make decisions immediately. So <laughs> tell like, people who Ellie is, because Ellie is okay, a so goddess. She is a literal goddess. She is my uh, strengths coach who I see monthly, more than once. I see her her one-to-one -one coaching once a month and I see her for micro-coaching. Uh, How have we never landed in a micro-coaching together? Because I always I see Ellie. You have, get out. You have micro-coaching too. Funny. Yes, I have for a year, more. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, more than a year. And we've never you, ever you, been in the same group. Do you do the same one every, every month though? No. And okay. my times are probably bonkers compared to like yeah. what you're taking. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's what it is. I usually do the Sunday, the second Sunday in the month. Usually I won't uh, this month, but almost, yeah. almost every single month. That's the one that I do, which oh, is probably funny. like four o'clock in the morning for you or something ridiculous. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so she is coaching Clifton strengths and she is, she's just one of those people that when she speaks, she shakes things loose in my brain and she changes everything about the way I do everything. So the fact that you needed, you know, that she has told you to s slow your roll before you jump. I love, I get, I, I get. I can't believe you have coaching. This is like, this has made my day. So like, what are some of your, what are some of your takeaways that you've had? I'm putting you on the spot now, but I'm just curious and nosy. Oh yeah. Like I have two really, 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 really big ones. Um, The first one where she blew my mind was that I, get and from with my futuristic and strategic I get energy pennies I get this energy from planning and then I would go to her and I'm like oh I just I love planning and I do all the planning and then I just and then I fail and she's like oh so it sounds like you get energy from planning and not from executing the planning so why don't you just plan and then throw the plan out <laughs> oh my god I love you, it I love her <laughs> you can do that so now I just, like that's part of my every day it's part of my week it's part of my month it's part of my year and then you know and then I get places I always get places and I finish books and but I I I don't need to to beat myself up for non-execution because my discipline is like 32. Um, and, but the other thing was, is that recently I have this whole new writing routine and I wrote a book in and revised it in 11 weeks, which is the fastest I've ever done. 95,000 word book. It's the best book I've ever written. And it was confirmed by my editor who I've worked with many times in the past. And she said, it's the best book she thinks. She said, you've always been very good. This might be great. 
Oh, wow. And it was because of something Ellie said. And she just got me out of the looping intellection thoughts. And she said, well, where are you writing those thoughts down? And I'm like, oh, everywhere. She's, and she says, write them all in one place. Look at them, look at your thoughts, and then react to them. So now I am reacting to my thoughts on a piece of, you know, on a spreadsheet. And then I can go, and I'm not an outliner. I'm, you know, but I'm reacting as I write. And it's changed everything. So yes, oh all hail God. Ellie. Yeah, seriously. I love her so much. I love, I love those revelations. I What's really your biggest like takeaways from her? <laughs> so many. I don't even know where to begin. I think the leaning into the competition. Okay, so my yes. favorite thing that she's ever done to me is that um, the last book I wrote, I wrote in three weeks and it was because she basically told me I couldn't do it. <laughs> We play this game and she basically turned around and said that I had to be far more realistic about. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly. It's just so over my mouth. This is a whole silly conversation. But anyway, she was like, oh, you have to be more realistic about um, what you're actually capable of doing, given the fact that you have a child and you have other responsibilities and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, no. <laughs> No. And uh, I was not happy with that. And then she was like, well, I've got your tracking data. And I was like, so she was like, I know what you're capable of. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she was like, um, that's dirty. The numbers don't lie. And that was the trigger for me. I just like, I was so pissed at her that I woke up at three o'clock in the morning like steam billowing out of my ears and I did not go back to sleep until 4 30. I literally seethed for an hour and a half in the middle and of the was, night and I and was it like, was real anger or was it anger with like that delight underneath it? I I don't know. I was <laughs> I was just like how dare she? How I, and and of course I knew that she was psyching me out. That's the funny thing. And I was like, I don't, I just don't know if she actually meant it. I don't know if she really believes this. I was like, she can't possibly believe this, but but she's right. The numbers don't like well, I well, I don't like the numbers. Anyway, and so she was like, okay, look, your your low ball is 20k. I had six weeks, and she was like, right, 20k. I was like, that is ridiculous. That is like less than. 400 words a day or whatever it was. I don't know what the numbers yeah. are. And then she was like, you can have 30K as an achieve and 40K as a overachieve. And I was like, no, I want my Mount Everest goal to be finishing the book. She was like, you you can't do that. So <laughs> yeah, it's you just can like imagine. She's, she's holding the red cape and waving it. Literally, literally waving at me. So um, I wrote 40K in two weeks and then I wrote 30,000 words in a week. <laughs> So I wrote the whole book in three weeks and then I printed it out because I'm that petty and I showed her the whole manuscript and, it, and I completely played the game. And I was like, Ellie, I just wanted to say thank you because you were right. Um, the numbers didn't lie and I hadn't ever got that before. And um, I'm like, I didn't hit, I didn't get 20K. And like her face just crumbled and she was like, oh, what did you? And then I like pulled up the manuscript halfway through her talking. It was like, I got 70K. Oh, and it was just glorious. So anyway. Did she fall off her chair? That's amazing. I love yeah, that. Yeah, you she was out. Yeah, I, well, only because she psyched me out. So she was like <laughs> super happy. But so I don't, so the lesson is that the right person saying the right thing. Yes. <laughs> can make me do anything for spite um <laughs> so there's that one the second one is writing in a competitive environment yes so I use oh right I don't know if you've heard I of that. picked that up from you and I I had logged in and made an account a while ago but I used it for the first time yesterday and I was like oh this won't work it worked <laughs> Did you write with somebody else? No, I was in the global room though. So there were, so we're like, okay. well, I was nobody that I knew, but there were mm -hmm. 11 other people in the room. Um, oh yeah. So, so you saw their counts going up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Could you, can you explain for people what it is? Because I just yes. thought it was so cool. So, oh, right. Uh, spelt O-H and then the word write dot C-O is a web room, I suppose is the easiest way to explain it. And everybody that goes into the web, you, you can get your own room or you can go into the global room or you can go into a friend's room and everybody has a word document essentially in there. 
nobody else can see. So it's completely private in terms of uh, your own working and your own rough draft. What other people can see is your word count. And so you will see when their you word said that to me, I, I almost crashed the car. I was driving at the time. I remember <laughs> I was like in the McDonald's drive through and I was like, oh, that's who made that for me. Who made that for me? And I was like, how much am I going to have to pay for that? Yeah. And it's it's free. I mean, as far it's as I can free. tell. I mean, there's ads in there. I don't give a fuck. Like, no, nope. give me ads. I'm not going to look at yep. them. I'm looking at my document. <gasps> Yep. And then the other That's thing, good. you get stars as well, which is like a cheap penny. Every single time you write a hundred words, you get a black star. Every time you hit a thousand, you get a gold star. And it has changed my life. Changed my life. Literally. I went Are from- you writing with your Patreon people? Or sorry to interrupt you. You went from- yeah. Oh, well, no. So I can answer that off as the, the page. So I have tried it with my Patreon people, but they, um, I don't know how much they enjoyed it. I think a lot of them have different strengths to me. So it yeah, didn't necessarily, yep. some of them liked it. There were a couple yep. who do have competition and uh, achiever and found it quite useful. Um, but I think you have to get the right people to sprint because the people who I sprint with in the morning, um, we don't feel competitive against each other because we're really good friends but because one of us writes really fast my friend can literally like she's in I just don't understand how anyone is capable of getting her word counts it it and she has zero competition so it allows me to be like okay but I want to I want to do as well as her Ah, right so it's like it's like mutual encouragement and then the other person's quite disciplined and gets like is like really focused and so she gets a lot of words and then that encourages me to get a lot of words not because I'm necessarily competing but because I don't want to fall behind or let the team down so that's amazing yeah yeah so I yeah I went from like 600 words an hour to like 2000 an hour which is just crazy but hey it works this is the power of strengths the best and you know it's interesting because yesterday I used it for the first time and I realized that my because I'm usually about 1500 words an hour between 14 and between 14 and 1600 words an hour and if I push I can get up to 2000 but yesterday I, I still hit that but it felt faster and it felt easier Yes. Yes. It feels I don't know why. I don't know. Then just being in my Scrivener document, it felt like a, uh, and then I went over to, oh, right. And actually I opened this it this morning before we met and it was down. I couldn't get in. It wouldn't (gasps) let me in. And I just, yes, yes. That happens occasionally. Uh, Just wait like five minutes and it will reopen and try a different browser sometimes. That's happened to me twice in like three months of use. So, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Interesting that you say that though, because I, I put it out to my classes because I'm I'm in the middle of a teaching session right now. So I've got, I can't remember how many students, but I've got three classes and I put it out to the classes and I'm like, here is Rachel's room. Here's the, and I run this thing called Rachel Says Write where people come and write with me for, you know, two hours twice a week. And no one has jumped at it. And that is where I have to remember that our brains are not like other people's because I expected there to be 20 people in that room. Mm-hmm. It's not going to work for everybody, but for people like us, it does. (laughs) I know. It is really, it really, I don't really understand why it doesn't work for other people because it is so powerful. And the thing, it's funny because one of the ladies that I write with in the morning uh, was also very resistant um, and was like, they were like, I'm not competitive. And I was like, I know that's okay. Like, I'm not really competing with you. It's just that your energy makes me work faster. Yes. Like, yes. and that was kind of how I tried to explain it. Um, and then, and then they jumped in and, and then they were like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. And I was like, I know, I know. So <laughs> probably all can't work without it. <laughs> okay. Perhaps then with Rachel says, right. I will just open the, I'll just say that the room is open every day. Come in if you want to. And then like continually encourage people to, to try it because I think it might be surprising. Oh my gosh, we've already gone over like so many different things. Can we say for people what what Clifton Strengths is? And um, what, you handle what Clifton Strengths is, but I will say as a, as a general disclaimer that I think as you and I talk, it'll be impossible not to talk about it. But we are not coaches. We mm-hmm. don't know technically. We have not been trained in this. We cannot give advice on it. Um, please don't come after us. It's just something that we're quite both passionate about. So what is it, my friend? 
Okay, so Clifton Strengths is a personality um, assessment that is founded on the principles of essentially ignoring your weaknesses yes. and improving your natural born talents and skills. Um, and there are 34 different strengths that every single human on the planet has, but in a different order. And your top five to top 10 are where you should really focus. And they include all kinds of things from um, thinking strengths, like being futuristic or strategic or context or in intellection, which is like somebody who's got a super powerful thinking machine brain um, to influencing strengths like competition and woo <laughs> and command and uh, activator and oh wait basically just me um, and then and then blue strengths like empathy and harmony and oh, I struggle on this one because <laughs> I don't yeah, have I don't the positivity have um, oh yeah I have that one yeah, some other ones that I've forgotten. And then executing strengths as well. So um, like achiever, discipline, um, deliberative, responsibility, things like that. And and each of them basically manifest in a different way. And you, the more you learn about them, the more you can tweak your processes, your writing processes to work with what your brain naturally wants, which ultimately speeds you up. And that is why our guru, Becca Syme, um, <clears throat> that's what that's her whole kind of ethos in her business and, and company. She tries to help writers get better faster. And she is a God given goddess. So she, there you go. She is. And the and the other thing for me is that it just helped me accept myself instead of beating myself up yes. for this absolute lack of discipline, which I am never going to have. I am never going to do the same thing twice in two days. Um, <laughs> but I know that my only executing strength in my top 10 is achiever. So I harness so much energy to that achiever and I marry it to activator and I marry it to my high competition. And, um, and so as Sasha and I are talking, we'll probably bring the, bring these things up quite a bit, but you don't need to understand them. You don't need to do it, but you should do it. If you're a writer, you should do it. Okay. I said it. I said <laughs> you it. Really you should, should. go you to really write. Should. What's it? What, write better, faster. Uh, what's the website? Yeah. Better, faster, Just, acad better, faster. better, faster, academy.com. If you Google yeah. Becca, Syme, yeah. S-Y-M-E, yeah. it will come right up. Yeah. Do you feel like you have fallen in love with yourself all over again? Yes. Yes. Yeah, me too. And it gets deeper all the time as I realize that there's nothing wrong with the way I do things. And I think you have, I don't know where this one comes from in terms of strengths or it just could be personality, um, which it all is, but like you have a lot of sh that self-assuredness. I have, you know, I think you feel like, yeah, I am fucking rad. And I love that about you. <laughs> Whereas I kind of default to like, oh, I could be doing it better. I should be doing it better, you know, and guilt and knowing my strengths and playing to those and forgetting about the things I'm bad at because I'm never going to get good at those and I don't have to has just allowed such a peace. Oh, mm. It's so yes, good. Yes, yes. And like, sh like shucking off all of the stuff that society told you yes. that you yes. shouldn't be or like mm -hmm. that's the biggest price. I think that's the biggest thing for me is that like I, I spent a long time being told I shouldn't be the person that I am. And I think that has been yes. the biggest process of acceptance, which is really powerful because it enables, like the minute you accept yourself, you can lean into yourself in a way. And mm -hmm. like, that just makes you better at everything. I think like I write better books. Yes. I'm a better human. I'm a better mother. I'm a better yes. wife. I'm a better everything. I'm the best I'm... now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but are you? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you are the best. You are the best. Um, I was reading just just last night. I picked up Alana Johnson's um rapid release book, and I was reading it with my strengths in mind because I have intellection number two, input number one, intellection number two. I am never going to write a book a month, and but I read it with that in mind, and I took the pieces that worked for me and my strengths, and I could just chuck the rest out instead of in the past. I would have read that book and go and said, "Oh my god, I'm doing everything wrong. I need to do it this way," and oh yes yes she she is a super machine I I was really in awe when I got when I spoke because she came on my show and um but when I read her book I was like this is the most consistency person I have ever oh met and I have none I have no consistency <laughs> Neither do I. down there with discipline no <laughs> <Yeah>. no. <laughs> so, no so and I know I can't do that I know I cannot do her tiered release schedule but it's a thing of beauty and it delights me Isn't to it? think about it really is 
So when I reached out to you, we were saying, what could we do? And I have an idea and I bet you have ideas, but I want to throw my idea at you. So I was thinking like, we do not want more on our plate. We're not trying to start a new podcast. I don't think, unless you talk me into it, but I was thinking like, (laughs) we could, we don't do it. Don't do it. (laughs) Um, But I was thinking we could, you know, record with each other once a month or once every other month or where it fits into our schedule and where we want to. And then I will blast it out on my podcast. You can blast it on your podcast if you want to, but use your discretion. You you do you. Um, so therefore it wouldn't get in our way too much. But I know that what both you and I do is blast through books um, about, especially about craft and the business. What if we had like a tiny little mini book club sometimes <gasps> if we want I to? No consistency, no discipline. We can throw that out tomorrow. But but like, you know, if we hear about a book we both want to read, or if you've read a book that you have to talk about in detail, yes. tell me to read yes. it. And then I'll tell you to read a book kind of thing. Oh what do you God, think? I love it. I love it. Can we include the occasional yes. rainbow book? Oh, Yes. Yeah. I'm all in. <laughs> I love that idea. It's just a book club. It's not a it's not a business yeah. book club. It is just yeah. a book club. Okay. I am all in. <laughs> uh, I love it. We could I love do, it. We could do two books a time. Like if we're if we're not t- talking that that much, it could be like you bring me a book, I bring you a book, and then once we both read it, we'll talk about it. And if that's in three weeks. Great. And if it's a very busy season and it's been nine weeks and we just can't get to it, that's fine too. We'll just chat when we feel like it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love that. And I love that. Um, there's no, like it can be business. It can be craft. It can be yeah. Rainbow books too. Yeah. Perfect. Because that, that makes it a lot easier to choose. Yes. Rather than. Yes. yes. Okay. Oh my gosh. I love it. Yes. (laughs) I super love it because also I really need some accountability with my reading because um I fell into a bit of a hole I was reading like four to five books a week and then I read too many of the same type of book and Mm. crash landed Mm -hmm. and decided I didn't want to write in a particular genre anymore and then and then I want to share what that was or do you want to keep that a little private um because I'm so curious (laughs) I can tell you off air okay yeah, I will tell you off air. Yeah, and so that's like resulted in a bit of a um, <clears throat> um, for listeners, I am <laughs> walking all over the place as I'm trying to <laughs> intellect on a word. It's resulted in a meandering of genre. Do you want where I'm going? Do you want to talk about like our future plans too for people yes. who are just coming to you fresh and just coming to me fresh? I would love to know where you are going next because I want to talk about books, yes, but I also want to talk about our careers as friends and like what, and what we're moving towards. Cause I think we have a similarity too. So what are you, what are you headed towards right now? I, I know, cause I listened to your podcast, but um, okay. lay it on us. So I think I'm heading in three places and one of them, yeah. I haven't, I, 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 love them I haven't told anyone. So this Ooh. is like, yeah. Okay. So the first one is um, I'm going to continue with my nonfiction uh, today is the launch day of the anatomy of a bestseller. Oh, yeah. yay. Yay, here oh, she is. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, um, so that is the most competition book I've ever written in my life. Tell us really a little, the, the, the log line for it, please. So it's called The Anatomy of a Bestseller, Three Steps to Deconstruct Winning Books and Teach Yourself Craft. And essentially what it does is it enables you to go, oh my, you know when you read a book and you're like, wow, just wow. And how, how, how. the wow and the how, the The wow and the how, exactly. (laughs) This book is going to show you how to figure out the how. That that. is the whole point of this book. This book is to show you how to break down the bestsellers in your genre or the books that make you go wow, so that you can take the tools that those authors are using and put them in your own work. So that's that book. I think I'm going to turn it into a premium course, which we have spoken about, Mm, Uh, but it needs to be the fall before I can do that, where I will um, sort of coach people through full end to end spectrum deconstruction, including the market for them. Um, So that's that side. The fiction side, I'm moving into a new genre with a new pen name that has a secret TikTok. Um, I know, I finally did it. You, you, because you told me to do a TikTok, and I finally did the TikTok. <clears throat> um, so that's that's a new new pen name. It's fiction. It's what I will say is that it is. No, I'm not going to say anything. Um, and then, sorry. 
And then the other space that I'm moving into is that I want to write an empowerment book about rebellion. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And I haven't told anybody that. And I've been intellecting on it for about six months. And I really feel like that is the thing I could do a TED talk on. Right. Yes. And so I don't quite know how to do it yet. I don't quite know if there will be memoir -y bits in there. I want it to be a bit like, not obviously like, you know, you've got the big wigs like Glennon Doyle, Mel Robbins, all of those people. But I've always wanted to be on stage empowering women. Mm -hmm. And I think this is how I do it. So this, this is, is something. It's ringing so true. This is your inner engine. I like to think of us all as having these engines that, that are the, the, where the coal is stored, where it's always burning and you are the rebel. And I think that's why people fall in love with you because rebels will fall in love with you because you are their spokesperson. And then people like me who are in terms of the four tendencies for, by Gertrude Rubin, I am, um, I am an upholder and I'm like, Ooh, I gotta, I, 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 I want to, I want to nurture my little baby rebel because it's so good for me. It's so healthy. You could help everyone. Yeah, exactly. There are so many people crushed right now mm -hmm. and it, and it makes me burn like a nuclear fire on the inside and I hate it. I hate it for society. I hate it for creatives. I hate it for women. Like I just, I, I hate that so many of us are forced to conform, are forced to do things that, that are bad for us, bad for our minds, bad for our mindset. And then we fucking wonder why so many of us are struggling with mental health, are struggling because we are trying to adhere to a set of fucking standards that, a faceless bureaucracy has told us to adhere to and really if we just embraced ourselves we can become like all powerful beings not to get too woo woo but no, like but it's seriously true. yeah so so yeah i i really need to write that book and uh i don't quite know what it will look like but it's coming it's coming it's it's oh. brewing it's it's on the I knew you would like that one oh, I've been I'm holding dying. that in I'm just dying. to tell you <laughs> I am dying I want I want this book to be out in the world I want you to write it I want to read it oh that's gorgeous I want to hear about your things now though Oh, I'm so I'm I'm bored by myself already because I'm so excited <laughs> about yours um let's see so I I, I also have the three things. That's funny that I didn't actually even put that together. So I'm continuing with the nonfiction and I have, I'm finally going to write the, well, I've written, I've written quite a bit of the 90 days to done book, which is the course I teach. Um, and it's really been bothering me. I actually had a call with Becca the other day. I, I got a coaching call with the guru herself because I came to her and I was like, I think it's, do you know about the, um, the Dunning-Kruger uh, cognitive bias. It's my favorite no. cognitive bias. Dunning-Kruger says that as you learn something, as you start to learn something, when you don't know very much, your brain, you cannot help it. Your brain will tell you, you are the shit. And this would explain <laughs> a, a lot of things in the world. It explained my early Photoshop skills when I did my first covers. I'm like, look at this. And it was literally the worst thing that's ever happened to, to the universe. Um, <laughs> So Dunning-Kruger, as you start to learn something, tells you the shit. But the reverse corollary is also true. The better you get at something, the worse you feel you are at it because you really understand how big a topic you are dealing with. So when I started teaching, um, maybe when I started teaching seriously, maybe five, maybe, maybe it was probably like six or seven years ago now, I was like, I'm pretty good at this. I'm pretty good. And the more I teach, the more I realize, oh no, everyone is different. No one has my brain. How am I allowed to do this? So I had this coaching call with Becca and I was basically like, I can't, I can't write a book about how to write a book. Who am I to write a book about writing a book? And Becca said, you are fucking Rachel Heron. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but what I have learned from Ellie, and I was talking to Becca about this too, is that it doesn't matter. Like I can give my tools and people can pick them up and use them. But also, oh, Becca said something beautiful. She goes, of all the people who are teaching people things, you are 0% what I'm worried about. Because I always tell my students that my ways are my ways. And here are a lot of other ways. And your ways are going to be your ways. And they're not going to look like anybody else. And I also encourage them to go get Clifton Strengths Coaching. Um, 
And the book will reflect that. And I'm going to be presenting in this book, this reactive writing method that I've come up with, with I, which I think is, it, it catches the people who are not quite pantsers and who are not quite ultimate plotters. It's the, it's the intellectors in the middle, the people with the high thinking skills who get caught up around the axle of thinking too much and making those decisions and moving forward. So that's my nonfiction that I'm moving forward with. And then I have, um, then I'm moving into paranormal women's fiction and that's what I'm super excited about. That's the, that's the new book that the editor loved. Um, I want to, I don't know what I'm going to do next in the series, but I want it to be, so here's the thing, Sasha, I want it to be a series and I want to do it for money and I'm self-publishing. I'm not giving it to my agent. I'm not getting to even look at it, but I also want to stay in love with it. I do not want to do this for money and lose the love. The second I lose the love and the passion, I want to get out, but I want a series. Oh so I need to, I need to be like, babying and feeding and growing this excitement and passion. And I want every book for me to get more excited about it instead of like, Oh, how many, I've never been in KU, but I'm going to go into KU. How many page reads did I get? I don't want to get caught up in that. Are you saying, Oh my God, because you're on the same page. A hundred million percent. <laughs> and I was, and I really like, I'm going to have to tell you more afterwards, but yeah, yeah I'm, I'm like, like I'm hurting <laughs> because we are, because like all you're saying all the things in my brain yes. and all the things I'm afraid of because, I want like, the opposite of burnout I want the yeah. more I write in this series the more excited to get and and I don't know maybe that's why I reached out to you because we can be kindred spirits and cheerleaders for mm -hmm. for this particular thing because it is important the thing that terrifies me is not making the money because I'm doing this completely secret it's secret pen name because mm -hmm. one, my significance needed the break, mm -hmm. needed to, there to be zero pressure. Yeah. The problem comes when you also have competition and you're like, well, <laughs> if we don't make money, we're not going to do this anymore. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I love this. I want to do this because I love this as well. But like, it's that, it's that constant battle of trying to make money with the thing that you love. And I know if I just continue to do it, that will happen regardless. You know, you just have to, you just have to reach the critical mass of book numbers because right. eventually you will beat the odds, right? Yes. You will eventually. Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> but tell my strengths that. <laughs> I loved, I, actually, I loved Alana Johnson's when she said in the middle, the, she said about releasing the first book of the series, she's like, fuck the first book, basically. Like, it's not going to, you know, just put it out there and go on to the second book. And, and my own, I don't, I think my significance is mid range, but I was like, wait a second. But yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. you're right. That's where I need to be focusing right now is writing that, falling in love with that second book, which I don't know what it is yet. But, um, but, oh my god, okay. we are going to be so good for each other. This is going to be so good. This is and then my, so good. and then my third is my TED Talk book, basically, <gasps> which is my it's my memoir um, about getting sober, and but it's not about getting sober. It's about finding myself, and also about finding, um, like the finding the woo woo in the world that is that I believe is supporting me and all of us and that I am connected to the web of interconnection all of this stuff um but it's also funny and cheeky and my I gave it to my agent and I didn't want to and I'll probably get it back from her but she wants me to revise a little bit of it before she takes it out and but the thing about this is that I've asked her please take it out please try to get me a lot of money and if you can't get me a lot of money I'm going to self-publish this so don't waste your time asking mm -hmm. me to edit this, but I will do a little bit for her. But this is the book I'm super, super passionate about. And she actually came up with a much better title for it than I had. And it is now called The Fix, my year of fixing, failing, and finding myself. Oh, I love that. What was it called before? It's called Complete, which okay. was which was nice and evocative and sweet. Also, absolutely ungoogleable, like the complete works of, you know, William Shakespeare. Like complete is not a good word for a book. And the no, fix, I love that. if I'm in a bookstore and if I see a book called The Fix or if I'm, a, you know, browsing on a website, I want to read The Fix of a, about a woman trying to fix herself and failing mm -hmm. at doing it and finally getting something. So, um, so that is my, that's my third, that's my third part. How funny that we're on exactly the same it. page. I know, I, I know, literally as well. Like we yeah. have the TED Talk book, we yeah. have the fiction passion and we have the nonfiction. Like yes. business as usual, this yes. is crazy. I feel I like you it. and me and Ellie should have a chat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, we should. All her fault. Yeah. 
Oh my goodness me. I love that though. And like, oh, I'm excited. And also I do love that title. That is a very good title. Thanks. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. So I want to hear more. I just, I want to hear a little bit more about the paranormal women's fiction. So like. It's, it's queer paranormal women's fiction. Okay. Um, Where are you in the process? So the first book is totally done. That's the one I got back from my editor and I will oh, okay. now have, you know, I've got to finish a couple of things this week, but then next week I'll be into edits, do those in a couple of weeks because they're very small edits. Oh, and this is I've the one never... that's the best book ever, which yes. it, that just sh- which connected. I fa- it which just, I felt so like it, yeah. it was, and I felt it, but you know, I, I, have, I have deceived myself before, but um, I do have the goal as you probably do that every book, my only goal is to make every book better than the one before it. And yes. I know that I do that and I don't care what anybody else says, but, um, and so far I've, I've succeeded in that. So that I just need to get a cover. I need to, oh, the thing that is going to slow me down is that I am going to do the audio for it because I've done audio for two of my books before, um, but they've only been nonfiction. I did the audio for a memoir that I wrote and for Fast Draft Your Memoir. And people like the way I read. And yes, I think I'm good I at it. I love your voice. But I've never done voices. I've never done voice acting. So oh. I'm a little bit nervous about it. Also here in New Zealand, like this there's no, exciting. it's all single pane and the birds are very loud. So I'm going to have to hire a studio booth in a recording studio and edit it. So I'm sure that that will take two or three weeks at least to record and then edit, but I, but I'm kind of serious about getting the audio out for each, because I always think about Joanna Penn and how she says our strength is our voice. And that's Mm -hmm. like, not only on the page, but if we can share our actual voice in somebody's ear, that's such an intimate experience. So I think that will help cement these books. And I want it all to be able to launch at the same time. So like, even though I'm really lined up to, you know, I could really release it in four weeks, but I won't because, you know, then I'll get the audio done and then that'll take a month to upload to ACX, not ACX, yeah. uh, to Audible through Findaway. So I'm going to do all of that. Yeah. So are you, are you like audience building now specific to that? I am genre? not. Can I tell I you know. about my fucking genius idea yes. I want to know audience all. building? Yes. yes. Oh my God. So, um, you had Tammy Lebrec on recently in that room. I don't even know if it was really recently. I'm always catching up on podcasts. Uh, but she had a new book out. So I bought the new book and then I was like, oh shit, I have the old book and she, uh, newsletter ninja. And then the newsletter magnet for readers book. And I hadn't, I hadn't read it. I just had it on my Kindle. So I, I read it in a couple of hours and then I read the reader magnet in a couple of hours. And then I had the idea, which is and everybody could, this is why we share ideas. Everybody can use this. Um, I'm going to do a 10 to 12,000 word novella that is the, I can't remember what she called it, a convertible cookie, which can be for somebody who is not in the world and can go at the end of the book. And it is basically each chapter. And I set this up for myself each, and I didn't know I was doing it because bless our brains. Each chapter, there's a quote from a psychic that my character in the beginning just does not believe in psychics, but her husband who she ends up leaving for a really hot woman um oh, what a shame <laughs> <laughs> what a shame uh he represents like he's uh he is the psychic's lawyer so she knows the psychic and the psychic has a quote at the beginning of each um chapter and they and then at the end my main character calls the psychic in panic basically like help 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 what am i doing and the psychic says you're an idiot basically but um so this is going to be the psychic story 10 to twelve thousand words it's going to be funny sapphic set up so that it connects really tangentially, but people will want to know about it if they've read the book and they'll want to know about it if they haven't read the book. And I'm going to do the audio for that too, which is a super high value gift. Like, right, you can get this audio or the ebook or whatever. You can get both if you join my mailing list. So I'm building the list for this particular group of people. But then here's the genius part. I'm going to make sure that there is a line or two in there that is hilarious, sapphic, and somehow implies you know the witchy woo dead people ghost thing that's going on in these books in a 15 second soundbite in my voice that then I can put onto TikTok and say and keep using and keep using the sound and here's you know you want more of that here's the free audio book that's an hour and a half long or whatever and I haven't seen anybody doing that that is at all yes isn't yeah, it? that is genius yes absolutely genius so it's so, so funny because um some of my patrons were asking me to um narrate the fiction and I was yes, just and like, how do you feel I about just it just don't know uh, well it's I really feel like this was meant to happen at this point because 
what do you think I was doing on the way back from boot camp today in oh the my car God. when I was what? on my own? Shit you not, I was practicing all of the different voices for my characters. Shut the and fuck I was, up. I seriously, I swear I, to God, I swear, I swear to God S, that is what I was doing today. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. They, they, they think I can do it. Maybe I can do it. And then because I've been narrating this book, um, I've been in the booth and this book has quotes from a lot of like other indie authors yes. uh, where I break down their work. So I have been narrating their sentences in different voices. And I'm like, wait a fucking minute. If I can narrate that's like what ad hoc voices yeah in here because quotes then I can do it in a bloody fiction book so what I decided to do was do my 4,000 word short story that's at the back of the the first book and then I was like <laughs> if I do that maybe I will but I hadn't thought about anything to do with TikTok because obviously that's like my old my current you know old series that's yeah I'm yeah. not gonna do any yeah I was like just as a practice run but um I fucking love that idea I think that is brilliant and I cannot wait I cannot wait to hear it and see it because like that I love your voice I literally love you that's why I listen to how do you write and like why what well what you were 50 percent of the reason I listened to the writer as well because obviously I listened for Jay as well but um uh, yeah like I I think you have such a gorgeous um audio voice and and, and I feel voice. the same thing about you I am 100 percent behind you in this people want to hear you narrate your books I really believe that this is hilarious i'm, nervous, I'm dying hilarious. well i'm nervous too wait tell me about your recording and i am keeping an eye on time because we don't want to we don't want to make this too too long we've done 45 yeah. minutes let's do a little bit longer um you have an, a recording booth in your house did you build that my wife built me a booth it looks like a telephone box i don't know how else to describe. it's like a telephone box on wheels it's literally it's like on a wheels square. So that just in case we buy a different house that I can yes. take it with me. Yeah. So we put it, put it on wheels. <laughs> so, um, but they're like locked in. So it doesn't move anywhere right now. But like, if we move, it can go in the lorry um, and I don't have to lose it, which is just fantastic. Right. So it's literally a square, like a telephone booth with a door. And then we had the whole house recarpeted when we moved in uh, and they had like a whole reel of spare carpet. So oh, we lined perfect. We lined the booth with carpet and then I brought audio paneling. So I've got purple. So it's silver and purple. It's like, oh, th those are our wedding colors. So it's hilarious. It's all fucking on brand, like, of course. So then I've got these like audio panels on the inside and then um, like a, a shield, a mic shield and my mic. Um, yeah. And then is I it standing, I sitting? So I tried sitting and I found that I made a lot more mistakes. Yeah, there are a lot too. more breaths. Um, and there was like this beat that came under it. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was the chair or whatever, but I've stood this time and I've barely like, it's a breeze to record this time. Yeah. So both books I've done, I had to, I had to stand to do. Yeah. Oh, you're blowing my mind though, because I thought I was going to have to rent a room. And I just realized we have this absolutely useless space right here where we have a few boxes, but it would have room for a little studio to be built inside it. I don't know if I could do it. Probably not, but I could hire somebody to build it for cheaper than I you, would spend a hundred dollars an hour at the studio for the yeah, rental. And, yeah. And if you get them to make it jigsaw piece so that it can be undone. Yes. You could then take it with you. Jigsaw piece. That's the magic word. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and yes, okay. It'd be a bit of a pain in the ass to take all the fabric out or whatever it is that you put in there, but who fucking cares if you get to exactly. take it with you, that exactly. is priceless. That is an asset. You will never, ever, ever have to put it money into it again how do you how do you handle um airflow does um, it get very hot i wear hot pants Nothing. and a sports bra <laughs> <laughs> that's what i've heard from so many audio people it just gets I mean, hot, literally so you... I wear hot pants and a sports bra i like run through the garden <laughs> wait is it outside it's in the garage oh, oh. it's in oh the my garage God, that's yeah so cool it's yeah so cool. yeah so, yeah I sort of hot foot it to the garage I mean no to be fair I take my clothes off in the garage um but <laughs> no <laughs> the best seasons are spring and autumn yeah like, yeah I mean if it's too hot or if it's too cold it's pretty fucking freezing um or, or boiling but no you know you just get used to it don't you, you just do it yeah. and you know you get quicker at it and so you have to spend less time in there I just pop it in and out really yeah 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 you're blowing yeah. my mind you're blowing yeah, don't... Lala my wife is going to wake up soon and she's going to like what who did you talk to because yeah. <laughs> calm down <laughs> seriously though it's so worth it to have your own booth especially if you are going to get like record 
mul- if you're going to do this multiple more than books once, yes it's like investing in vellum right exactly you know- because i i figured it would probably cost at least fifteen hundred dollars two thousand dollars just to rent the space and i can get it built for probably eight hundred i'm betting yeah i mean we spent 250 pounds but on the materials yeah yeah, yeah. Well, you're a bloody genius <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. So why don't we wrap up and then um, okay. we're, we're just going to invite people to keep, what, do we need a name for this? Or is it just like <laughs> Sasha and Rachel? should have a name. I don't know. What, I, don't know what I, don't, uh, I literally don't know. Something to do with like, what about, yeah, some, I don't know. Maybe we could brainstorm afterwards. My intellection's going, bitch, shut up. You think first. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. And also we can ask people to tell us what they think. Yes. Okay. Too. That's a great idea. All yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. If they have yeah. any ideas. Otherwise it's just, you know, that, that yeah. extra little <laughs> salon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> salon de, de girls. Yeah. Uh, I don't know yet. <laughs> the rainbow club. No, no. I, I don't know. Let's, let's think of something good afterwards. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. This is yeah, so no, awesome. Thank you. Thank you.